Brian Westbrook with GeekWire Studios here at AWS Seller Conference 2025, joined by Matt Yanchishin. Matt is the Vice President of AWS Marketplace and Partner Services at AWS. Matt, first of all, great to see you again. It's been an exciting year. Walk us through what has changed, what has grown since we met last year. Yeah, so much. I mean, uh, AI has been advancing rapidly. Obviously the rise of agents and agentic workflows has been uh, just totally a game changer, not just for how my team works, but also of how we've evolved the marketplace and we continue to evolve partner services as well. And I know you have some changes within your own team. You talk about some optimizations there. We'll get to that in just a moment. Tell us about the big announcement, bringing agents into the marketplace. Yeah, so at the New York Summit just a few weeks ago, uh, two and a half weeks ago, we announced AI agents and tools in the marketplace. And what that means is we now list uh, AI agents themselves, but also associated tools, either SaaS applications that embed agents or tools like vector databases, et cetera, that you use with agents alongside those agents. We also announced third-party guardrails, third-party knowledge bases like data for agents, a whole category of everything you need to be successful for agentic workloads. You can now buy through the AWS marketplace alongside all the other goodness that has been in the marketplace uh, since its inception. So really taking it to the next level, if you will, evolving and growing. Tell us how your customers have responded to that. What are you hearing from the sellers themselves as they're starting to roll out this, these offerings into their products? Yeah, first of all, everyone's excited. Uh, you know, one of the other big announcements, or the big announcement at the New York uh, uh, Summit was Swami, who's our head of all uh, Agentic and, and AI at AWS. He announced something called Agent Core, Bedrock Agent Core, yep. and that's a whole set of capabilities that allow customers to build agents. And when we launched the Agent Marketplace, we announced Agent Core integration. So uh, what customers are excited about is they can start to take advantage of these Agentic capabilities in their accounts, but then buy third-party agents and deploy them into their accounts and attach them to Agent Core, which means they can run them in their account, attach them the gateway so that the agents can talk to each other, communicate, and used effectively. So all this new agentic capability, you can leverage it with the third party products that you're buying through the marketplace. Without necessarily having to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, totally. Excellent. Now look, you had a great keynote today. It was amazing to see kind of where things are going and where things have come. You hit on a couple of major high level topics. What can you share with us? Yeah, the first is, uh, I guess, product-led growth continues to be a big area of growth for us. Sure. Uh, a lot of our sellers uh, you know, have been selling SaaS through private offers like custom pricing, custom terms, uh, successfully through the years, are now building their pipeline, like generating leads and acquiring new customers through self-service and through product-led mm -hmm. growth. So we've been doing a lot. We had free trials a few years ago, but this year, for example, we launched AI-powered product comparisons. We just announced a new partnership with PeerSpot for more reviews. We renewed our partnership with G2. We have AI-powered pricing insights. So a mix of new content in the form of reviews and new insights driven by AI that make the product listings on Marketplace a more effective way to both capture new business but also convert those opportunities is, is really getting our sellers excited and it's ultimately better for customers. Customers love, like on the Amazon retail site, having reviews and having suggestions, all, you know, alternative products so they can make better buying decisions. So we've been focusing a lot on helping customers yeah, build trust with what they're, what they're buying and make more informed buying decisions. And not only that, just find the products in the first place. Tell us about AI and search. Yeah, so that's something actually a lot of people have been asking for for a while. So when we launched the new AI agents and tools category in the marketplace, we also launched a new AI powered search engine. So now you can type, hey, I'm looking for fraud solutions in banking or insurance, and it'll auto recommend uh, agents that it thinks will be appropriate for your use case. And that's really just kind of phase one of a lot more AI enhancements that we're coming out with in terms of discovery. So it sounds like you're using AI within the marketplace itself, but your team is also using AI. Tell us about some of the improvements you've seen at the marketplace team. Yeah, so I, I, we've been using AI for years. You know, We've had models, like AI models, in the marketplace since 2018, actually, but it's really since January that my own team has started to realize like actual measure real productivity improvements. Um, and also in our features, like if you look at that AI search capability I just talked about, it uses uh, Cohere, uh, their re-rank uh, model to actually do the ranking. It uses the Amazon Nova model to actually power the search. So we have a multimodal approach where we're using different models for different specific use cases. We use a lot of Claude from Anthropic as well throughout our products. But internally, you know, we use QDeveloper, uh, QCLI embedded within uh, Visual Studio Code with tools like Klein, and we've seen, again, measurably in like real production deployments on ticket reduction, like the things that actually measure developer productivity, we're actually getting faster. And you know, by our, our estimation, we're getting somewhere between 16 to 22 percent faster, specifically on my team, through the use of AI and even more specifically generative AI tooling. So that's exciting because it means we can ship more features for customers and. You know, as you saw, we're, you're actually seeing that in our roadmap. There's literally more launching for marketplace and partner services as a result of our adoption of AI. 
more and more because your team is allowed to be more efficient. What would you say to somebody who maybe hasn't quite bought into this notion yet? Maybe their teams are thinking about how should we be doing this? What advice would you give them? I mean, at this stage, it's all moving so quickly that the best thing you can do is just get started. Just get go. hands on. You know, we, we saw a step change really with the switch to like prompt driven development and now spec driven development powered by tools like Kiro. And when my team just, we, we hit a critical point of adoption and just more people were using it, more people were swapping notes. And then, you know, suddenly uh, you start to realize that, that there's, so you, you bend, bend the curve all of a sudden. So get your hands dirty and, and get your leaders as well. I think one of our key learnings was uh, whether, um, you know, I guess I'm overhead, but you know, whether, <laughs> get your senior leaders using it too. And, and I'm, I'm using it too as well. Yeah. And I think, in the past, sometimes your principal engineers or your leaders wouldn't be as, as much involved in the coding, but what we found is that you need everyone in on this. Like, no matter what you're doing, embed AI and force yourself to embed AI, whether you're writing tests you know, for unit tests or whether you're doing high-level design docs as a principal, like use AI and force everyone to kind of use those tools because they'll realize like, wow, you know, this is actually getting better. We've crossed this inflection point where it's driving real productivity results. So just get hands on. Just get into it. And, and that's something you even, you're, even your family's doing. Yeah. So yeah, my kids use Lovable to make websites. Uh, it's a fun tool. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, I use QDeveloper, Cloud Code, a lot of other tools at home. I, I really have a, a feeling that to be credible and to uh, truly embrace this really important moment in, in software development and, and technology in general, you got to get hands on. And that, that means at home too. I want to go to two different areas. One is Partner Central. I know there's a lot of great things coming there. And procurement. Let's talk about Partner Central first. New things on the horizon. Yeah, so uh, Partner Central, we, we had this thing called the Partner Experience Transformation over the last few years in partnership with Salesforce. And we really uh, relaunched our Partner Central platform, which is the, the, the service, the, mm -hmm. the product that all of our partners use to do business with AWS. Uh, we've introduced AI capabilities, a lot of self-service workflows. So you don't have to pick up the phone and call your partner development manager every time. And we're, uh, we're, we're coming up to, I guess, what we're calling Partner Central 3.0, like the third generation of Partner Central, which is where we're going to finally, finally, truly bring Marketplace and Partner Central together so you can manage all your listings in one place, manage all your funding, credits, all the other important parts of managing your, your business with AWS all in one tool and have a lot more sophisticated security and, and role-based access control and the things that you know these large partners need to be successful with all the people working on the Amazon relationship. So the convergence of Marketplace and what used to be called APN or Partner Central, mm -hmm. but also more sophisticated self-service and AI tooling all within Partner Central. Let's talk about procurement. Lots of tools available for sellers to make that process easier so they can get back to what they're doing better, building better products. What is happening in the procurement space? Yeah, so I mean, end of the day, you know, product like growth is so important for uh, new partner acquisition and all these tools for like Partner Central, et cetera, for managing your, your Amazon relationship effectively. But the bread and butter, you know, where our partners are really, you know, making their, their money and, and where the biggest deals for customers are going through is private offers, you know, custom terms, uh, custom, uh, custom terms, custom pricing. And those private offers go through procurement teams typically, and these enterprise procurement teams have you know, a lot of processes, a lot of requirements. And so we've been really focusing on how can we help that part go faster? Yeah. Like the legal reviews, the procurement team reviews, the, the security reviews. So things that seem small, but like having a purchase order on every order that goes through Marketplace, if you can insist on that, and we've introduced a bunch of purchase order capabilities, it just makes everything go seamlessly. Sure. And it means that uh, partners get paid faster by customers, customers have better visibility into what department to charge it to, et cetera. So we've done a lot of these sort of incremental improvements to the procurement experience to make that go faster because that means more deals, faster deals for partners, it means happier customers. So really just focusing on making procurement more self-service, lighter weight, and ultimately faster. A complicated lens to look at a lot of this is globalization or international offerings. Tell us about some of the new things coming there. Yeah, well, you know, we talk about speed, we talk about growth. Uh, we're, we're a global business. AWS Marketplace operates all over the world. We have customers and partners all over the world. Uh, and so we've been systematically launching new local entities. And what that means is we can allow partners to have bank accounts in that country. You can use local currencies. So you can use Euro. You'll be able to use Canadian dollar. You can use Great British Pound. You can use all sorts of different currencies, Japanese yen, Korean won. So customers in those countries want to operate in their language. They want to use their currency. They want local tax treatment. They want bills that meet certain, for example, VAT or withholding right. tax requirements. All of this is, again, so important to make things go quickly and seamlessly for customers. So we've really been investing 
in unlocking local billing, local currency, local tax treatment, all of the things that you need, and local language. If you look at like Korea and uh, Japan, for example, over 70% of marketplace users have opted into using their local language since we launched it sure. earlier this year. So that just shows like this appetite to, you know, it seems natural, operate in your own language when you're procuring through the marketplace. If there's one international country that AWS has a beachhead in, a, bit, a large establishment that is not the United States, what would that international country be for you? Which one are you most excited about? I'm excited about it all. I mean, South Korea is the, the most recent one. We just recently launched this this year. We, we introduced a few new features for Japan, which is a huge market that really has made it a lot easier to transact there. So I'm really excited about Japan and South Korea and APJ more generally. Um, but I mean, you know, outside of the US where we're seeing uh, just the largest amount of business at this time is not a country, but a region, the Euro region, yeah. and EMEA more specifically. So because we support the Euro, because we have a, a European local entity, that's uh, a particularly great area for growth. But honestly, uh, it's all important. I want to be everywhere where customers need to buy and everywhere where sellers want to sell. Very political answer, but I was kind of thinking you'd say Canada. <laughs> You know, I, I am, you're right. You know, I grew up in Canada, my family's in Canada, so I guess, hi mom. But uh, <laughs> uh, no, Canada is, is also an, a very important market. So, sure. you know, we, we've done a lot of work already to unblock uh, sales in Canada, but a lot more to come. A lot more to come, great. I want to talk about the future. What is more to come? What are we going to be talking about, you and I, when we sit here at this Anchor Desk next year? Yeah, well, I mean, you're starting to see the future already with some of the announcements like the Asian Marketplace, and I mentioned AI-powered product comparisons, AI-powered pricing insights. You're, you know, it sounds cliche, but it's true. You're going to see AI everywhere. I think an area where I'm particularly excited about, where we're focused, is what you said earlier, is with procurement and the intersection yeah. of AI and procurement. Like, just imagine a world where an agent, not necessarily a human, can issue a private offer. Like, with custom pricing, custom terms, to a customer, a customer could evaluate that, some type of agentic yeah. negotiation could yeah. happen and it could be accepted within acceptable guardrails that's acceptable to the customer and acceptable to the partner. These types of deals, especially for what a lot of customers would call tail spend, yep. can be automated, even with custom terms, custom pricing. And when you tell that to a procurement team, their eyes light up because they don't want to be bothered with yeah. all these small to medium deals. They want to focus their, their smart people on the largest, most strategic, most complex deals. And if we can automate, well, those two, but everything underneath, yeah. Like that, that's going to be a huge step change for the industry and for procurement teams in particular. It sounds like the next year is all about being putting the resources where they need to be, being more strategic, leveraging Agentic AI, and some pretty cool offerings and some pretty cool packages that'll come uh, in the next year for not only AWS Marketplace, but also for the partner services. Matt Yanchison, I'm Brian Westbrook. Thank you for watching. This is GeekWire Studios.